If you've been doing astrophotography for a little while, you've probably heard of the term meridian flip before. And to be honest, I actually encountered my very first meridian flip earlier this week. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I want to ensure that everybody understands what a meridian flip actually is, how to do it properly, and how to set it up using the ASI Air. Let's start off here in Stellarium and discuss what the meridian actually is. Basically, if you draw an imaginary line from south to north, directly overhead, that is your local meridian. And it doesn't matter where you are on Earth, you just draw an imaginary line from north to south, and that's the meridian point for you. And what's gonna happen is that if you're photographing an object at night, maybe the North American Nebula, for example, once it starts getting pretty close to the meridian, your telescope is most likely gonna be close to horizontal. And this is why we even need to do a meridian flip in the first place. Because if you have a large telescope, then when your object here, goes past the meridian point, like so, from here on out, your telescope is gonna start going towards the ground, and it might bang into a tripod leg, or even ultimately hit the ground itself. So this is why the software engineers and the hardware guys decided to implement an automatic meridian flip. In other words, once the software notices that your object has crossed your local meridian, it will automatically trigger your telescope to rotate around to the other side. Now, as the object continues to rotate past the meridian and off into the western sky in this case, your telescope will be rising rather than falling towards the ground. And that's the basics of the meridian flip. Again, the whole point is that when an object crosses the meridian, most likely your telescope will get dangerously close to hitting a tripod or the ground. So if you have the meridian flip turned on in your settings, it will automatically reconfigure itself to avoid that problem. Now that we understand how the meridian line works, we're going to head over to the ASI Air, and then we'll go through that workflow together. Okay, I'm now inside the ASI Air interface, and the first thing we're gonna do is click on the Sky Atlas button in the lower left. That brings up the cool little sky map that's built into the ASI Air. And then from here, we'll take another look at the meridian and how this whole thing actually works. It's a bit hard to see in this cluttered interface, but there's still that green line that runs from due north to due south and that is, again, our local meridian. I've now moved us facing towards the south where we have the Seder region and the North American Nebula, again, both getting pretty close to the local meridian. So what I'm gonna do is use the Sky Atlas window to make my telescope go to the orientation you see here. And when it does that, the telescope itself is gonna rotate almost completely horizontally as it approaches the meridian. And this can be kind of scary because your telescope and camera might get pretty close to hitting that tripod leg, and that's why you might want to include a pier mount extension to your mount. That will raise up the mount from the tripod and give you more clearance for your telescope and camera. As you can see in this video, I have all my lights turned on while I'm doing this because there's a lot of things that can go wrong when your telescope gets close to this horizontal position, including your cables getting snagged and more. And that's why I want you to do this test along with me today. I want you to verify that all of your cables are long enough, that your telescope isn't gonna bang into a tripod or anything else. That way, if you decide to let all this run automatically overnight, you don't have to worry about anything breaking while you're asleep. Now that I've verified there's no problems when my mount is to the left side of the meridian, I'm gonna intentionally move it to the right side of the meridian and watch what happens. And as we can see here, my mount goes from horizontal in this orientation to pretty much a complete 180. Now it's horizontal in the other orientation, and it's basically done the meridian flip. Again, if we look at this here in the app, basically if you wanna test this on your own, just find an area to the left of the meridian and tell your telescope to go there, then find an area to the right of the meridian and tell it to go there. And that's basically the meridian flip, which you've done manually. Okay, at this point, I verified I don't have any problems with the meridian flip. So now I can go back to my preview window click on the telescope settings or mount settings at the top of the screen, and then scroll down until I see meridian flip settings. Inside of here, you've really got three different options. The first is to stop tracking X minutes before the meridian. In other words, how soon do you want the mount to stop moving when it gets close to that meridian line? I think it defaults to five, which could be a waste of time, so I've actually lowered it to just one minute. Although if you have a big, large telescope, you might wanna leave it to five, maybe even 10 minutes, so there's no problems whatsoever. The next setting down is do AMF X minutes after meridian. 
You'll probably want to leave this to the same setting, either three minutes or five minutes, maybe even 10 to be safe. And then finally we have recalibrate guiding after AMF. What this will do is recalibrate the guiding to make sure the guiding works as intended. And I'd highly recommend you turn this on. Otherwise the guiding might be really confused and it will ruin the rest of your images potentially. And that's all there is to it for the Meridian Flip settings here in the ASI Air. It's pretty straightforward. Now we can back out of our mount settings, click on preview, and change it to auto run. This is where we can actually turn on the Meridian Flip inside of our shooting schedule. You'll see the switch over there on the left that says Meridian Flip. Just make sure that's turned on. And then from here on out, every time the object you're photographing crosses the Meridian line, your telescope will automatically reorient and that'll prevent anything from running into the ground, as we saw earlier. I do recommend you read through the Meridian Flip little warning message here, just to make sure you understand exactly what's going on. One final thing I want to mention today is that my ZWO AM5 mount has an automatic stop when the object reaches the Meridian. It knows that if it goes any further, there's a potential for the telescope to run into the ground or the tripod. And this was causing me to have a lot of blurry stars when I was trying to photograph because I'd go to bed and I'd wake up and I didn't realize it was stopping at the meridian. So for anybody else who might have the ZWO AM5, make sure that you do turn on the meridian flip. Otherwise, you might waste half your night photographing blurry stars because the mount has stopped moving. Another word of caution, if you don't have the AM5, most likely your mount will continue to rotate if you don't turn on the meridian flip. And that can be very dangerous as we've seen today. That telescope can go straight into the ground, or a cable could get pulled out, who knows. I hope you enjoyed today's video, you understand what a Meridian Flip is and how to set it up properly, and most importantly, now you can sit back and relax while the mount takes care of everything for you moving forward. And that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you check out my Deep Space course over on HowTube. It currently has over 100 videos, of which this tutorial is one of them. And throughout the Deep Space course, my goal is to teach you everything you need to know, whether you just bought your first Star Tracker, a DSLR and a telephoto lens, or maybe you've upgraded like I have to a go-to mount, a dedicated astro camera, and a set of narrowband filters. Throughout the Deep Space course, we're going to cover how to set everything up and be safe. We'll also talk about how to use the ASI Air in a lot of detail. Then we'll discuss how to actually find the objects if you still are using a DSLR. And then finally, I would say the most important step is how to process your data. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you're never going to get those amazing photos that you want. For more information on the Deep Space course, just scroll down and check the video description and you'll find a link in there. Looking ahead, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos here on YouTube now that I've kind of gotten all my courses taken care of as well as some other stuff. So stay tuned and I'll see you in another video.